Hi there, Norman with iSaveTractors.com. Welcome to another part of our Cub Cadet 149 Tractor Loader Backhoe video series. Guess what? It's finished! In this video, I'm going to give you a walk around of the completed Cub Cadet 149 Tractor Loader Backhoe. This tractor started as a 1974 Cub Cadet 149 given to me by my father-in-law. It wasn't running, it sat in his backyard for about 15 years before I touched it. I brought it here, I disassembled it, I rebuilt the engine, repainted the machine, fabricated the loader and backhoe, hooked up all the hydraulics, worked out some of the bugs, and here it is, the finished product. So here she is, the Cub Cadet 149 tractor loader backhoe. Let's begin with the front of the tractor. You remember me uh, fabricating this bucket. Here are the welding hooks I added. These right here are two inch by 16 inch stroke hydraulic cylinders that I got from northerntool.com. All the hydraulic uh, oil is routed through these 3 8 inch hydraulic lines. In an ideal world, I would have used a steel tubing, but I'm not set up for that. Maybe in the future and upgrade. Brand new front end here. I uh, Instead of using the traditional Cub Cadet 149 kind of striped lines for the headlights, I painted it all black and I think it came out looking great. I decided to paint the tractor all in yellow versus having the white hood and a couple other white pieces. I just went straight yellow and black as the color scheme and I must say it came out great. It looks awesome. Let's uh, take a peek under the engine compartment here. Here's the newly rebuilt engine, all using iSave tractor parts. We have an iSave tractor piston, piston rings, carburetor, ignition coil points, and condenser in this engine, as well as the air filter. It runs great. I'm operating the hydraulic pump down there on the bottom uh, via uh, a split tapered bushing pulley that's at the front of the PTO. There is no way to disengage the pump, so this is running uh, full-time. As soon as you start it up, the hydraulics are live. Let's close this up. So here are here's the two-spool hydraulic valve. This uh, outer handle operates the tilt and curl of the bucket of the front end loader. This inside one oper operates the boom, the up and down. There's also a float position, so if I push this all the way forward, the front end loader will float with the contour of the ground. All these hoses and fittings I got at surpluscenter.com. This is called a Power Beyond port right here. This is what supplies oil to the backhoe, which we'll get to in a moment. This uh, left upright here for the front end loader acts as my oil reservoir. This is a, a breather cap. What this is is a cap with a little air filter inside, so air pressure can go into the tank, but it keeps uh, dust and other debris out of it. So that's that. This whole hydraulic system took about five gallons to fill all the cylinders and fill this reservoir up. So about five gallons of oil. Coming down here, the foot rests. This is the the parking. This is the brake as well as it can. It lowers the hydrostat controls. So if this is on full, if I hit the brake, it will reduce the speed of the hydrostatic transmission. Steering wheel. I put an hour meter on this tractor. I've used about three and a half hours just in testing and uh, fine tuning all of the engine and hydro uh, hydraulic components. The seat my wife made for me. I opted to go with just a flat seat instead of trying to make a normal seat swivel and turn around for the backhoe. Uh, I just decided to go with a flat cushion. So we made this out of uh, vinyl upholstery material as well as a, a foam cushion type material inside and it's mounted to a piece of plywood which is mounted to the tractor. This makes it much easier. When I'm operating a tractor I'm not typically lounging around and leaning back in my seat. So I'm always kind of sitting up straight or leaning forward looking alive. Uh, so I opted with just this flat bench style and uh, so far it's worked great. Coming back here, here's the backhoe part in all its glory. This is a six spool 
uh, stick valve is what they call it, like stick controls versus joystick controls. This operates all of the backhoe controls. I'll go over the controls with you now. This uh, furthest one on this outside edge operates the slew pivot, and the slew pivot is what makes the backhoe pivot uh, from left to right. This next one is the boom, and this makes it go up and down. If you uh, pull this up, the boom will come up towards you. If you push it down, it will go down away from you. And the swing, if you pull towards you, it's going to go left, and if you push away, it's going to go right. This next one is the outrigger on that side, right over there. If you push down, the outrigger will go down, lift the tractor up. If you pull up, the outrigger will come up. This one is the opposite side outrigger, right on this side. Same thing, pull towards you, it comes up, push down, it goes away. This one right here operates the crowd arm which is that main arm that the bucket's attached to. If you pull this towards you, the crowd arm will come towards you, and if you push away, it will go away from you. And this last one is the bucket, and if you pull towards you, the bucket will scoop in towards you, and if you push it, it will scoop out away from you. Here are all the hydraulic hoses. They're all routed kind of underneath this mount and then coming back up through the top coming this way. Right now I have zip ties just kind of helping me tidy everything up, but I'm eventually going to replace these with actual hydraulic hose clamps. The bucket came out great. I did a few test uh, digs and it works great. Now, one of the biggest, uh, kind of all the bugs I had to work out, it took me a couple weeks to get this video up, because once I installed everything, there were a couple of uh, leaks and drips here and there from fittings not being tight. So I had to take remove those, tighten them back up, and that was uh, quite a process and a very messy one. Uh, so I didn't get footage of that, uh, but that's what took me so long. Another area of troubleshooting that I had was the pulleys that operate the hydraulic pump kept coming off. I use these split tapered bushings, which is supposed to pull the pulley tight towards the uh, shaft, and it's supposed to make such a tight kind of grip that it won't come off, and apparently I didn't do it tight enough, and the pulleys kept coming off, but I think I got them now. So there it is. There is a walk around of our Cup Cadet 149 tractor loader backhoe. If you have any questions about this machine, let me know and I'd be happy to talk about it. Uh, the next video, I'm going to be operating this backhoe. Uh, give me until the weekend to get some practice with it and then I'll show you a video of what it really can do once an amateur isn't operating it. Well, this is Norman with iSaveTractors.com. For high quality aftermarket parts for your vintage small engines like your Kohler K-Series, Briggs & Stratton Cast Iron, Tecumseh HH, and the Kohler Magnum Twin and KT Twin Series engines, please check out our website, iSaveTractors.com. If you haven't subscribed to this channel already, please do so. You'll see tons of videos of this tractor at work. My name is Norman. See you next time.